Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Submarines are known as the Silent Service and can project force for navies globally. The ability of certain submarines to break through the polar ice caps helps protect these regions from foreign submarine encroachment. The turtle was the name given to the first submarine specially constructed and deployed for military objectives. It was invented in 1775 during the American Revolutionary War by American inventor David Bushnell. This circular oak and tar-covered vessel failed, yet it was a watershed moment in submarine warfare. Submarines use a system of ballast tanks to help them dive, surface, and retain neutral buoyancy. This is done by pumping seawater into or out of their ballast tanks. One can occasionally see a seawater mist around the submarine because of the pressure at which seawater is forced out of ballast tanks. When the order dive, dive is received, dive, dive. ship control begins the process. Dive, dive. First, the coning tower's front and aft diving planes are set to dive. The whole apertures, including the torpedo tube doors, have been secured to ensure total watertight integrity. The trim and auxiliary tanks are then flooded to reduce the vessel's buoyancy. Meanwhile, the speed is slowed to reduce the influence of the bow wave. The officer of the deck directs the helmsman to steer the bow planes down causing the ship to sink beneath the sea. The precise dive angle is determined by the interaction of forward motion and buoyancy of the ballast tanks. Once submarines must surface, some vessels are able to do so through thick polar ice caps. During the 2018 ice exercise, or ICEX, for example, a team from the Undersea Warfighting Development Center Arctic Submarine Laboratory, or UWDC ASL, the University of Alaska Fairbanks, and Yukpikavik EUPIOT Corporation, or UIC Science, witnessed the U.S. Navy's operational readiness in Arctic regions. This exercise necessitated substantial planning, including pioneering surveys to evaluate and collect data on ice flows across the Beaufort Sea. Such work is critical to ensuring that surfacing submarines, such as the Seawolf class fast attack submarine USS Connecticut, the Los Angeles class fast attack submarine USS Hartford, and the Royal Navy's hunter-killer submarine HMS Trenchant can penetrate the icy Arctic surface. Site selection and ice analysis are critical for this, as the thickness, density, and homogeneity of the ice must be evaluated. On March 21, 2018, the field party arrived at the surface site, and their crew embedded sensors and other monitoring equipment within the ice. The obtained data were utilized to confirm and improve existing ice charting technologies and predictive models, which are crucial for strategic maneuvering beneath and through a powerful Arctic ice flow. Watching a massive naval vessel, such as a submarine, surface through polar ice is a thrilling experience. Submarines from the United States Navy use a meticulously calibrated method to surface through Arctic ice. Ice layer thickness are carefully assessed during mission-specific, data-driven analysis 
to locate a possibly viable surfacing site near the intended ice camp. The submarine then begins its ascent through the ice by adjusting its buoyancy via the ballast tanks. The shattering of the ice upon surfacing on an ice flow produces an instantly recognizable sound. The coning tower and emergency escape hatches are then manually cleansed of the ice to restore visibility and maintain emergency egress capabilities, both of which are critical in this hostile environment. Criteria strictly govern the choice to disembark the submarine and depend on sea state, iceberg movement, and local meteorological conditions. It enables the crew to conduct research, emergency exercises, and liaison duties with the ice camp. Ice tethering is used to secure the submersible. Hardened stacking cones are drilled into the ice and used to anchor mooring lines, keeping the vessel fixed in the face of potential ice shifts or current fluctuations. The cone drilling technique also confirms ice strength and stability, which reinforces the initial site decision. The emergence of a submarine in this hostile environment has, on occasion, even attracted polar bears. Submarines are made up of highly resistant materials and sophisticated technology to fit the harsh environment where they are intended to operate. The manufacturing process involves using multiple materials and a series of complicated steps. Steel is the main material used to build this nuclear submarine. It is utilized to construct the essential parts of the submarine, including the inner and outer holes, as well as the ballast tanks. Copper, brass, aluminum, glass, and plastic are also used to create the ship's parts. The nuclear reactor, which represents the heart of the vessel, is fueled with highly enriched uranium that provides unlimited endurance. Materials like germanium and silicone are used in electric components. After the approval of the design, engineers move to shape the hull's parts. Thus, steel plates are cut, sized, and then shaped on rollers under immense pressure. The steel plates are then welded together to form the submarine's hull. Before welding the two holes, large interior parts are installed, as it would be impossible to do so otherwise. Sand casting is used to create essential exterior parts like rudders and propellers. This method involves pouring molten metal into a mold and letting it cool. Once formed, the parts are assembled within the submarine. The exterior of the hull is then polished until smooth and painted. Next, a protective coating is added to reduce friction drag and protect the vessel. After almost two years of construction, the USS Pasadena was launched on September 12, 1987 and commissioned on February 11, 1989. Submarines are usually launched using a floating out technique. When the ship is ready, the staff rolls it out carefully and places it on a floating dry dock. After the final checks are done, the staff opens the valves to let water into the platform. The floating dry dock sinks underwater, lowering the submarine with it. When the weapon is set at the appropriate level, 
it moves out from the platform where tugboats wait to maneuver it for a sea trial. Before the delivery of the ships, the shipbuilder undergoes sea trials to test the boat's performance and seaworthiness. Here, the Virginia-class submarine Montana has just succeeded in its alpha trial. During this, the boat demonstrated its capability to fulfill its missions. Typically, the speed, maneuverability, equipment, as well as the submarine's ability to remain undetected are closely monitored to ensure the vessel meets strict requirements. Incidents in the middle of the sea are dangerous, but what if it is undersea? The most treacherous environment, pressure, limited oxygen, and the vast unexplored depth make undersea incidents exceptionally perilous. In this unforgivable environment, U.S. Navy submarines operate for months. Any failure in the systems of the ship's integrity would result in deadly consequences. To limit such risks, the U.S. Navy has developed innovative solutions to rescue its personnel. The Undersea Rescue Chamber, or URC, exemplifies these efforts. The Undersea Rescue Chamber serves as a crucial emergency escape system designed to evacuate submariners trapped in downed ships swiftly. This chamber is an asset of the Undersea Rescue Command, the U.S. Navy's official command for rescuing sailors during a submarine casualty. The Under Rescue Command conducts regular exercises and training operations. Off the coast of Catalina Island, the command deployed this chamber during a submarine rescue operation. Two crew members operate this chamber, while other officers aboard the HOS Dominator support them by carefully lowering the chamber using a tethered cable. At a depth of 90 feet, the SRC mated with a portable training fixture simulating a submarine hatch. This mating is the critical event that allows personnel to transfer from the distressed submarine to the URC. Professional divers are a key part of rescue operations. They can access and perform complex tasks undersea. In fact, in 2003, NATO established an international hub for submariners to save lives worldwide. The International Submarine Escape and Rescue Liaison Office, or ISMERLO, promotes training, exercises, and technologies sharing among 41 nations. These submariners view themselves as one family. The only enemy is the sea. Their job is full of risks. Nevertheless, they uphold strong values of saving lives from the bottom of the sea. ISMERLO divers regularly train and test rescue systems to ensure their safety and the success of rescue operations. As a member of ISMERLO, the U.S. Navy collaborates with several nations for joint submarine and rescue exercises. Chilamar 3 is one of these trainings carried out in partnership with the Chilean Navy. The exercise involved a practice scenario wherein the Navy's deep submergence unit had to reach and transfer personnel from the disabled Chilean CS Carrera submarine. 
Deploying the pressurized rescue module, the team dove to 480 feet and mated with CS Carrera. Four Chilean officers were then brought to the surface by the pressurized rescue module. Submarines represent some of the most complex and capable vessels ever built, combining stealth, endurance, and cutting-edge engineering to operate in one of the most hostile environments on Earth. From their origins in the 18th century with the turtle to today's nuclear-powered giants capable of breaking through Arctic ice, their evolution has been driven by the constant need for strategic advantage beneath the waves. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.